Mark coming to you from Baker's Green Acres. And uh, what I'm doing right now is I'm moving temporary cow fence to a location that's closer to the house because one of the cows has a, uh, a toenail issue and she's limping and I don't want to make it worse by having her have to come from all the way up there all the way around I would say well it's got to be three quarters of a mile walk on a sore foot so the last time I said anything about grazing cattle was down on this field and let's see if you can see the line I just taken the fence out and if you can't see the line that's kind of good it's kind of good because we don't want to graze this down to the point where there's nothing on it you know and there's a principle known as the second bite principle so when the cows come out here there's going to be stuff that they like better than other stuff and uh, let's say it's an alfalfa sprout and the alfalfa sprouts up and they bite it off and then a couple days later it sprouts up again and they bite it off again you really don't want that because you can destroy the plant so uh, per move you only want them to take one bite and then move on to the next field so they've been on this one for collectively I'd say probably 10 days now and I started there at the wood line and moved this direction and every few days I would just move give them another 30 feet and the species that I have down here there's nothing that they really uh, will not eat and I'm not so concerned about the second bite on this field as I am on other fields there is one thing here that they really like and it's clover and usually they'll go after that right off <clears throat> anyway I'm gonna move them closer up to the house just for the purposes of sore footedness and you might be looking at this all behind me and it's like well will you ever get back down here sure I'll get back down here I got till December 1st that's my target date to be out on on the field and not feeding dry hay so you know here it is September 8th it's got to be 60 degrees 65 degrees out it's beautiful and the Sun is coming down we've had plenty of water so this grass is growing and I like I've said I've made the decision that I'm not going to cut any more hay I'm just going to extend my grazing season as far into the winter as I possibly can and that means I don't have to run equipment um, I don't have to burn fuel I don't have to break equipment I don't have to fix equipment so the time it was really neat yesterday <laughs> I uh, you know I made the decision okay I'm not gonna cut any more hay so the hay equipment was just sitting as it would sit in between cuttings uh, at the end before I'm gonna store it for the winter then it comes in gets power washed anything that was broken on it gets fixed do some spot painting on it things like that let me get a rest here well yesterday I spent the whole day working on my baler and my swather or hay bind they call it the cutter piece and I just was able to take my time doing it it wasn't like a mad rush because it's gonna snow here pretty quick so it freed me up to make sure that that equipment is more serviceable for when I get out here next summer to cut hay again so I put it away yesterday and I know it's a hundred percent and it's ready to go except for one gear but I couldn't get it yesterday but I'll get it and put it on but I wanted to fill in the blanks a little bit on this whole grazing thing for you if I could um, I wasn't absolutely clear how I do this so when I set this up on this side and on that side I had permanent fence all right and then I went 90 degrees to that or per perpendicular to that and cut it with a temporary fence and I I know I've shown this before but who knows who's coming and when these are the step-in posts all right 
get a little stepper on them, use step them in. When I got these 10 years ago, they were two bucks. I got them on sale. And you can see they've kind of worn a little bit, so that's that, uh, that rubberized uh, plier handle coating that they sell. And I just, anytime they get a crack in them or this stuff gets hard and uh, the fencer will actually start shocking through the insulation and then it creates a problem. So anyway, I repair them. And so here I've just picked them all up and I have them sitting in the back of the Jeepster here. And then this is the, the fence that I use. Let me see if I can just wheel it around here so you can see it. And it's got this insulated handle on one end. And this wire is just, they call it poly wire. It's pretty cheap. I mean, all this stuff is really cheap when you consider it because, okay, let's say I've been on this field for 10 days. Let's just say 10. It's, it's more than that, but there are, I think there's 10 cows, 10 bovines. Some of them are steers, some of them are milk cows. Uh, all of them are bred now. Um, every day that that cow eats is a cow day, all right? So if the cows are up at the barn in the wintertime, that's 10 cow days that I have to feed them, all right, every day that goes by. And we're just using 10 cows. Um, you want to plant it so in the wintertime you have less and more of them when you can graze. But So for 10 days, I just got 100 cow days. And what is a cow day worth? All right, they figure about 28 pounds of dry material per day for a cow. That's, that's the rule of thumb, 28 pounds. So, you know, a square bale uh, is usually, you can probably get, let's say it's 100 pounds. All right, you could get four cow days out of a square bale. What's a square bale cost? Let's say five bucks. And it's just, a lot of times it's more than that, um, but let's just say five bucks. So in order to do 10 cow days or 100 cow days, I would have had to have fed, I'm getting mixed up here now, but you get the picture, all right? It's, it's pretty expensive to feed cows if you're going to feed them hay, as opposed to just letting them walk around and eat what's out here, all right? Um, and this field benefits from them being out here going around grazing disturbing it with their hoofs they're very heavy animals so they they push seeds in um, you can work it to your benefit as we've talked about before but you can get out here and you can seed things actually you can uh, put different species of forage out here that you want to see happen and uh, it's very doable because they'll push those seeds in and those seeds will germinate and they'll come up um, but uh, I wanted to just show a little bit more of what this looks like. All right, today's a move day. I just came down. It took me all total to get the Jeep going and get the equipment in it that I needed, which isn't anything. Actually, I was taking stuff out of it. It took me a half an hour to come down here, walk through, and pull all these out, and then wheel up the, uh, the wire and then take the solar fencer off. And the solar fencer, I, I've shown you how I put that on. I just hang it on the fence, the permanent fence. The ground goes to the woven wire or a ground post, which I don't need ground posts here because they have woven wire everywhere and it makes a really good ground. And then this clips on to the, you know, the positive side of the fencer. And what the fencer is, all it really is, is a, it's a battery and then a solar collector. And then it's got a capacitor in there that charges. And if something touches it, it discharges to ground. And it will do that like a bunch of times, a whole bunch of times. And uh, these fencers are just phenomenal. You know, I, I'm way, I'm a half a mile from the house. And 
there's no electricity down here. So I either got to haul a battery with me, a 12 volt battery or a solar fencer. Um, both have served me well. Um, I, we can talk about batteries another time, uh, but battery fencers work really well. And essentially a battery fencer is the same as this, except it, to recharge it, I need to bring it to the, the maintenance shop and put it on a battery charger, which is good because in, a, in an operation like this, it's nice to have a bunch of extra 12 volt batteries around, you know, because everything, most everything runs on 12 volts. This Jeep does not, it's a six volt. All right, well, this is it. This is the, the complement that I need to do this. Now I'm gonna take this up to the field that I'm gonna put them on closer to the house and then set it back up. Thank you.